All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake here. We appreciate you stopping by to uh, listen to it to us. Uh, how's it going, Jake? It's going well. It's been uh, a busy couple weeks, but back in the studio. Yes. So uh, Jake uh, just recently moved, and uh, his life is a lot different than it used to be. He went from uh, typical suburbia to more of a, a, a rural setting. That's right. Uh, kind of, you know, I grew up kind of in the wilderness of PA, but, you know, so I'm kind of trying to get back to that kind of living down here. Yeah. And it's similar, but different. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same, but different. That's right. Well, we've uh, had a lot of things happen since the last time we podcast. It seems like the world just keeps getting crazier. It's like every day you just expect them. I mean, they might as well tell you tomorrow that uh, chainsaw bears are attacking uh, metropolitan areas, and I probably would believe it. Yeah, it's right around the corner, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just never know what tomorrow may bring. So, But uh, but if you're listening to this, you know, we, we definitely don't believe there is any reason to fear or to panic. Yahuwah has this. Uh, this is uh, it's all under control. That's right. Yep. He's uh, does not give us a spirit of fear, so um, and he's in control of things, and he uses a lot of things to uh, get people's attention. Um, and as long as we're trusting him, we're, we should be good to go. Yeah, he's definitely not in the chaos, that's for sure. So I don't believe, you know, if, if we learn anything about um, Yahuwah and his word, he is the... Uh, you know he's a perfectionist yeah. and uh he's not not about craziness and chaos and randomness uh, he's very calculated right but um but you know i don't know i'm sure everyone listening to this has seen the mask thing and jake do you have to wear a mask at work i'm not allowed to go to work <laughs> but if i well, <laughs> if i did go to work i would have to wear a mask yes. so can you even go to work to get like say you forgot some important book that you need i i can work from work, but they recommend we don't. So. Uh -huh. Do you have to like make an appointment and someone has to be there and watch you and make sure that they do the take your temperature and, you know, pat you on the bottom three times mm. as you go through the door. How are they taking that temperature? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't go into work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and I've been to a few, uh, uh, a food service facility and they do that and make you fill out a questionnaire and it's like almost like the FBI, you know, they're, it's almost like they're going to call people that know you. And yeah. has he been around anyone that has a fever? Okay. He's good. Yeah. So I think it's just better to, I mean, I get to spend time with my family now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So why would I go into the office? I guess. Well, and I've had one facility, the same facility made me wear a mask. In fact, they wouldn't let me in one day. I forgot I had a bandana in my console. And um, the HR lady came and met me at the door. And she's like, we can't let you in here. And I was like, I bet I could find something. No, <laughs> we can't let you in here. I just need to turn the No. So, and so I came back the next time with a mask. So, yeah. And then uh, I had a lady the other day that uh, I met with her and she texts me beforehand. She's like, I know it's a pain, <laughs> but could you wear a mask? And so I was like, uh, I got a bandana. And she's like, that's fine. <laughs> so, And so it was 100 degrees almost, and I'm outside talking to this lady and I had to wear a, wear a mask. And I'm like, nice. lady, you know we're outside, right? Yeah. So, and it's not like I even have to get close to people. So. Right. But, but, you know, I mean, that's where people are. And, and you know, if I know anything – um, it is very easy to judge uh, people um, from from our high horse, if you will. But Yeshua accepts me where I'm at, right. and I have to accept people around me for where they're at. And this is where they're at, and I just have to accept that that's the reality that they live in. Yeah. Yep. It's you know a little bit of you know it's it's a courtesy thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the weaker brother thing. Courtesy. Courteous. Courtesy thing. Because mm -hmm. I could be like, oh, that's ridiculous. This is all made up. Lady, I'm not doing the mask. Forget it. You right. know, I could be a big jerk about it. And, um, 
and it would it would cost me financially. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be stupid. <laughs> so, but if you wanted to, you could. You could, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this whole mask thing um, kind of got me thinking about leprosy, and there was a Torah portion we read a while back, and uh, so I started. Oops. Oh man. So I started. Um, uh, working on this one day, and I shared this with Jake. And what did it say? Oh, uh, it said, "So Matt, uh, we collaborate via whatever it is, share slide sharing uh, mm -hmm. technology." And it, I got a notification that says, "Matt has shared leprosy with you." <laughs> <laughs> and so I was, I checked myself real quick yes. to make sure I, everything. <laughs> Nothing was falling off of me or anything. So. Yeah, that's that's good. All right, well, we'll dive right into it. You know, when I started looking it up, leprosy is also known as Hansen's disease. Have you ever heard of Hansen's disease? I have, and most of, I'll just be up front, most of the information I have about leprosy and Hansen's disease comes from the X-Files. So. Oh, <laughs> for, straight from the X-Files. Did right. Scully have leprosy? No, they ran into a... A group of folks in a hmm. colony. Is this the old one or the new one? Uh, old, the old series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, hmm, I don't remember. But uh, so we're going to dive in and kind of look at it. So you know, I get some of a lot of this information came from the WHO and not the rock band and not Tommy, but uh, the World Health Organization. And I know some people out there listening to this may be rolling your eyes, and going the WHO. Ah! <laughs> So, but I know um, we don't even give them money. So why are we listening to them? I think we're still giving them money. <laughs> I don't think it cut off instantly. So I think a lot of people did hear Trump say we're not giving any more money, and they're like, "Oh, just just shut right off there, right there." Um, I imagine it takes a, a year or so. The money's already been released. Uh, they're not pulling all that back. But uh, but which I think is a good thing. I think the who was kind of ridiculous and. We pay the largest percentage. You know, we can go into that, but it's crazy. So anyway, so this is their map um, of how many new cases. And I, and I don't believe that they would uh, – there's no reason that I know of why they would uh, make these numbers up. And so – Yeah, I don't see a lot of uh, media on the fudging of leprosy. No, no. Or the, the outburst of leprosy. Yes, yes. So. Um, so in um, just not much to be gained there, I right? Right, right. And uh, the leprosy tends to be concentrated more in warmer climates. Um, you know, you don't have it as much in uh, the Arctic Circle. Um, you know, it tends to be also not a lot of people in the Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of people up there. That does make a difference. Not not that many people in Greenland. You know, it's not reported. North Russia. Uh, Siberia, yeah. But once we buy Greenland, yes. look out. Yes, uh -huh. then it's all over. Yeah. So, but you know, this map, this kind of doesn't really sh tell you a whole lot. But um, and so, if you, I will eventually make this um, available online. But if you, you know, if you wanted to see where we got this, you know, this isn't just Jake and I making this up and just pulling out of the random blue. Uh, it takes you right to. The World Health Organization, uh, Southeast Asia, and there's this whole thing about the Global Leprosy Program with an E. Program. You know, know it's official right. when you see that. So, and it has all kinds of stats and figures. If you are a nerd and want to look that up, you can. That's where it came from. So, anyway, back to this. And how do I get oh, click? There we go. There you go. So, and this is according to ScienceDirect.com, another website. And so this is the map that I pulled, and I think this map is better. So I think this map is probably more accurate. Yeah, because and, Texas is not indicated as having a lot of leprosy here, so we like uh, this one better. Although Texas seems a little <laughs> small on that map, so that's not a true Texan map. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, but it does seem to line up with the, the theory that you have more of this between the two tropics, Tropic of Can Cancer and Capricorn on the, you know, the latitude lines on the globe. And uh, there does seem to be a connection between hot and humid weather and leprosy. And as you'll see in the later slides, some other 
uh, qualities in these regions. Yes. So, what is leprosy? So, it's caused by bacteria on the skin. And it's also transmitted by mucus. Uh, it's got a five-year incubation period, and it seems to be connected to poverty and diet. So this thing can live in your body five years before you know that it exists. And, uh, you know, you could affect potentially other people. Um, now, although leprosy is not like the COVID, supposedly, that uh, is highly transmittable, uh, you know, leprosy is... You know, I don't think if you're around somebody that's uh, leprous. Um, it just jumps in. You. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you have to worry too much. <laughs> <laughs> but with a five-year incubation period, I mean, maybe you and I do have it. Who good, knows? good. Maybe I need you to, did give me leprosy. Maybe I need to stop uh, chasing and catching armadillos, apparently. Ooh, yeah. So I hear they give it to you. Yes. So don't do that. Don't lick an armadillo. Exactly. We're going to put that on our next T-shirt with a picture of an armadillo. Let me just write that down. <laughs> okay. And so the, this comes from the PMC. Everybody knows the PMC. And the U.S. National Library of Medicine. And the NIH. So lots of acronyms. You know, good three solid acronyms That's how there. You know it's, it's real. Yes. And yes. Official. Just like the CIA. Um, so, so anyway, they came to the conclusion that poverty... And this is a direct quote from them. Poverty means more than just a lack of income. It also encompasses the multiplicity of non-monetary aspects that then combine and intensify the negative effects of being poor, including lack of proper food and nutrient intakes. Correspondingly, food shortage, food insecurity, and lower dietary diversity are several aspects of poverty that are more commonly found in those struggling with leprosy. And Jake, once you, oh, I probably clicked on that again. So is that the same one? All right. You read that one. Okay. Previous studies have shown positive associations between food shortage and food insecurity with the occurrence of leprosy, and it was suggested that impaired host immune response against the causative bacteria as a result of insufficient nutritional intake is the possible cause of this condition. That one too. However, there has been no sy systematic study on how various aspects of poverty interact and associate with leprosy to support the suggestion, particularly in Indonesia, which is currently the home of more than 17,000 new leprosy cases registered annually and has the highest proportion of multibacillary cases. Mm, good word. I made it up myself. Yes, it makes it sound uh, really smart uh, when right. we read that. So. Those are not our words. You can just say MB. Yes. So. Yes. And so um, the purpose of this research, which is part of the micro LEP study, is to educate, elucidate, elucidate the is what does that mean? Enlighten. <laughs> Let me enlighten you as to what. <laughs> okay. Elucidate. Uh, okay. The association between poverty related dietary intake and leprosy by determining the interaction between demographic, socioeconomic, and diet related factors of poverty on several nutrition indicators, which encompass which encompasses people with leprosy and health controls in the Indonesian population. And then when I make this available uh, on the website, uh, you you should be able to click there and go, you know, if you want to see more. And that website again is sabbathlounge.com. Yes, that's right. So, Jake, this all, you know, we'll, we'll talk, you know, so basically the inclusion of that, they say that what I got is that uh, poor diets, terrible living conditions, you find more leprosy. Well, what is your take on what we read there? Yeah, basically that. It's, uh, you know, poverty, living in poverty kind of uh, lends you to coming into contact with a lot more unclean things. Yeah, it kind of makes sense, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Digging through the trash, and especially Indonesia and India, you get this impression of people, you know, going through the uh, trash dumps looking for food, you know, and it makes sense that, yeah, you might get something. You might be catching something. Yeah, definitely seems biblically unclean. Yeah. Well, unclean Matt, till evening. What does this have to do with uh, what the 
how did you connect this with the Torah portion? Well, um, I started thinking about it like this. It's an inward disease that manifests with visible symptoms, you know. So people who have leprosy often don't know for a while, and it resides in their body, and, and then, boom, all of a sudden they start seeing little spots and these lesions that start appearing. And, um, and so when that happened, especially in the ancient world, it caused separating from family and friends and community because nobody wanted to be near the leper. You know, you are very unpopular uh, when you're the guy or the girl with leprosy. Uh, it spreads by contact, and it causes much pain and suffering. No doubt. You know, still to this day, uh, you know, a lot of this is, you know. It, yeah, I think they've kind of gone away from the commune, the local yeah, colonies. Yeah. Although there was still one like in Hawaii not that long ago. Right? I mean, I might fake leprosy to live in Hawaii for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that insensitive That's a good idea. me to say? Maybe so. Okay. Maybe. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just mm -hmm. saying Hawaii yeah. might be a fun place to visit. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're not trying to say anything uh, by that, but uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, definitely. The, the definitely th things have changed in how it's treated, for right. sure. And I think they figured out that you can contact and be around people um, and it's not like, not like these other things where you're for sure going to get it. Yeah. And we might um, notice that with some other diseases right. that we're currently dealing with. And so, and so, and, and with leprosy, it could be seen and heard. So it attacks the vocal cords. And so they develop a raspy voice. This was interesting to me because it's mm -hmm. like, there's like no getting away from it. Yeah. There's like nothing about you that, that gets through this leprosy stuff. Right, right. You can't hide it. You can't put on makeup and be like, I'm good. Everything's fine. <laughs> Didn't really work that way. No. And it had a stench to it, you know, because a lot of times uh, there was rotting, literally rotting flesh, like gangrene, black, wow. and nastiness. And so, um, and it causes numbness. It starts uncomfortable. Uh, it has wounds and sores, and eventually you can lose all sensation and numbness. And supposedly, these uh, it's not uncommon for someone that's got a bad case of leprosy to lose an appendage, and they don't know. That sounds and terrible. I know. And somebody's like, dude, you just lost your finger. So, I don't know. Sounds terrible. It sounds terrible. Mm-hmm. And it can transmit on surfaces. It can it. It cannot be hidden, just like we talked about. So you 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 can't hide this. Um, it leads to muscle weakness and blindness. It makes you unemployable. You know, it's hard to get a job when you got these things going on. Yeah. Um, often they often, especially in ancient times, they lived um, the way homeless people do. They lived in camps and they depended on each other for survival. And, and I think. Uh, I think the point of this slide was that you start to see some some similarities to kind of how things are going right now. Exactly, and some of them. Uh, some of them, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and they've gone back and forth on so many things about it can live seventy two hours on surfaces. Well, maybe it doesn't do that. And I mean, yeah. Who knows? I mean, everything's gone back and forth, but. Um, wear the mask, don't wear the mask. Mm -hmm. It helps, it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. They've literally been on every side of the equation there. Yeah, yeah. And, you <laughs> know, <laughs> <little woman>. Yes. <laughs> Excuse and, me, I, I think yeah. I'm catching something. I think you are. And uh, if you have this or someone, you know, for a lot of... For the early days in our company, we were afraid, man, if somebody gets this, we're, we're going to get shut down. Yeah. Ironically... I found out this week, okay, so when this all started, I went to this lady's house, and I f had found out, you know, that day her school had had a meeting, and she had told me, and she had kind of been freaked out. She's like, I feel better. The school made me feel better. Great. And then, but I had heard the story of how it started in our particular county was that uh, somebody worked in a school system, and that was the first, that's patient zero in our county. Well, this lady that I talked to back in early March, um, she was in contact with patient zero. And so I was around uh, in contact with her, but it was for, for a brief period of time. And she 
was like third contact because her child was in the class with this person. Mm -hmm. So, but in contact tracing, I would have been pinged. You would have been the guy. I would have been in quarantine. Yeah. Had they done that. But I didn't, had no idea. I'm going to back away slowly. <laughs> I forget, where's my mask? Yes. So I thought that was pretty crazy because I remember watching all that and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then I found that out. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Thank you for telling me, I think. And yeah, it's almost as if you were protected in some way. Yes, yes. Uh, very much so. And so anyway, uh, so when we're going to talk about sin. And so clearly it doesn't, you know, you probably can see where this is going. Sin is also caused by an inward condition, condition of the heart, condition of the mind. Often in the Bible, when we see uh, heart, uh, they're really referencing the mind. Um, and um, but but definitely something that happens inside our thoughts and our inner being. Or the kidneys. Or the kidneys, yeah. And it causes separation from the father. It spreads like a bit of leaven. It spreads slowly, and it keeps one from the Father. Yeah, so that twice, I guess. it's interesting that, you know, you can read it as leprosy and go, yeah, that makes sense. Kick them out of the camp. They, you, know, you don't want that spreading throughout the camp. Well, just like when uh, Moses comes down from the mountain, and they're all worshiping the golden calf, and he does away with that disease that he doesn't want spreading through the camp. Mm -hmm. Well, any number of times that they prevent the disease from spreading throughout the camp. And uh, But it's easy to read it and think of the physical and not connect it to sin. But, you know, Yahweh has, has more in store, more in mind than just the physical. So. Oh, yeah. So, joke break. Um, what was the uh, first commandment broken um, oh it was uh I, I feel like i'm tr being tricked here but don't eat of the tree of hmm. the knowledge of good and evil well the joke would be all of them when he threw them down and broke them on the ground oh uh, yeah yeah see, good one huh that's see you got me yeah that's why I was reluctant to answer your question. <laughs> yes. 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 I knew it would make me look a fool. That was definitely a dad joke, and I apologize for that, but yeah, I am a dad. So anyway, so definitely a parallel between sin, and it starts off small, it spreads, eventually you become numb, and you're not even aware of the damage you're doing. You know, you think about alcoholics, and you know, so many, so many people that start down the road of alcohol, you know, um, it starts off, you know, just a little drink here and there, and uh, it seems like no big deal, nothing. And then pretty soon, you know, it's every day. It turns into a six-pack. It turns into a case, and uh, they can't function without it. And, in fact, their body can't function without it. You know, if they go to stop it, all of a sudden their body is going to uh, revolt and be very upset with them. So, um, but... But like leprosy, sin leads to death. Um, you can't hide it, and it produces outcast. Right. Yeah, I think uh, I think these are real good uh, tie-ins to to likening leprosy with sin, and how uh, really when he's talking leprosy, he means much more, and uh, it's yeah, very similar. Well, and I've also come to the conclusion just this year that any all this stuff that we read about. In um, Numbers and Leviticus, even sometimes it's just like, oh my gosh. Well, okay, I get they had seven bowls and they had this, and you know, there's some of those things where they repeat over and over and over the same phrase over and over and over and over. Yeah. And they, there's some very minute details, and sometimes you're like, w why is it recorded? Why do we have to know that these guys carried the sticks of the tabernacle and these guys carried the cover and these guys carried the gold dishes. And, um, and I think that all of these are interwoven and connected into the concept that all of these people and all of the tribes represent the concept of one body. And that's the deal with leprosy. It's part of the body. And so when, when you had these skin diseases in camp, uh, they affected the entire body and right. just the way sin affects the entire body. So you can make an argument. One reason that we're seeing 
all the craziness. It, part part of this is just it's just straight up judgment from Yahuwah. We I mean I feel like it, that's part of what it is. You right. know, He has told us that the wages of sin is death. You know, and uh, we have a long track history in the Bible and else you know well mostly in the Bible of how people disobey Him and there's consequences to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that uh, is gets gets a little squirrely on that is when uh and maybe you can in uh elaborate on it a little bit is when so we'll say well yeshua paid our sin debt so the the consequence for our sinning you know we don't pay that anymore but there's clearly more to that than and and not every sin was a uh, had a death penalty tied to True. tied to it. Mm -hmm. So, but there are certain sins had consequences, and yeah, those consequences, um, you know, definitely they don't go away. You know, just like in the physical, you know, if you get a ticket, you know, I I worked with a guy that. He was young. He got a ticket, and we were working. Seems like most of my career, except for when I taught, I've been connected to driving in a car. And so this this uh, other job I had, I was in car rental, and it involved driving in cars a lot. And my boss one time was gone. He went to lunch. He was gone for hours, and we we're like, "What is going on?" You know, we, this this is before we all had cell phones. We didn't know what happened to him. And like it comes to find out, he got a ticket a long time ago. Just kind of forgot about it. Didn't think anything about it. And uh, he went to go renew his license. He was a law-abiding citizen. He wasn't trying to break the law or do anything. And he goes to renew his license, and let, and the lady's like, uh, "Sir, can you?" step over here for a second and she didn't you know her countenance changed and he was like uh what's happening no, <laughs> this is I'm, weird i don't want to be in line anymore <laughs> i'm just gonna go home now forget i ever came here and, and then the next thing you know the trooper comes around the corner is like sir um we have a warrant for your arrest seems like you have a traffic ticket on your license that you haven't paid for and he's like uh, I, you know, yeah. can, and he's like, can you follow me to the ATM? I can pay it right now. And the guy did, and he, he got it settled. So I don't think he can do that anymore. But, um, so anyway, but you know, uh, these things kind of have a way of sneak, sneaking up on you and there's, there's a consequence to pay, yeah. you know, um, when, when, when you sin, but, um, yeah, it kind of, kind of shoots that, uh, you know, we got, we got our, our free ride ticket now mm -hmm. kind of in the foot. It's, mm -hmm. You don't get a free ride. There's still consequences to your sin, uh, even though it's paid for. Mm -hmm. it's, you still got to deal with, I mean, that's why we live in an imperfect world, right? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. it's still free will and people not choosing the right path and the consequences thereof. Yeah. So would people say, you know, you could murder someone and there's no consequence because now you, Jesus saved you and you're covered under the blood. Does that, do you think it works like that? You know? Uh, yeah. I, I think that that would be a, that's a pretty weak argument. It doesn't hold up very good. If you, if you go down that, that that's an easy trail to chase and it yeah. seems to destroy it pretty quickly because most people wouldn't say, you know, because uh, there have been, you know, there was there's a famous death row inmate in Texas, and she was she had killed somebody. I can't remember her name, um, and uh, she converted, and uh, there was a big push to try to set her free, and uh, and that's what people were doing. You know, like, oh, she's a Christian, she's a good good lady now, but she still killed someone, right? You know, it didn't, right. you know, and that's it's sad. And she even admitted, she said, yeah, I know I did this, and I know that. There's a punishment for this. So. Yeah. And it's funny that that sounds obvious. and uh, But I've literally had that conversation with people like early on in Torah was, was like trying to explain to them, so you're saying I could do this and something as egregious as murder, you know, and or stealing or something. And it doesn't matter now, right? Mm. And they would say, 
you're right. It, they have to. You have yeah. to say that if you're going to hold the position, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it just, I was just floored by the fact that people were saying this. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, that's a greasy grace carried out to uh, to really far extent. Yeah. So my family hates it when I say that, by the way. So anyway, uh, sin. So sin both required priest's involvement. So if any of you have read through the Old Testament, you have seen that before where the priests were the doctors. And sometimes I read through that and I'm like, man, I, I would have hated being the priest for that reason alone. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'm sure that I, I, I bet that there's a hierarchy amongst these priests. And I bet the new guy had check out the skin inf- infection. <laughs> you know, that's what you do when you start out. You don't yeah, start yeah. off cutting the meat. You start off looking at all the gross stuff that people are bringing you. Hey, man, can you look at this? <laughs> no, no, I will not. <laughs> Please, sure, put your pants back on. <laughs> I don't want to see that again. <laughs> but they definitely... Um, but you have to after seven days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that definitely would not have been pleasant. You know, you think about uh, they're in the, you know, I I'll often think about them in the wilderness doing that. And they're in the, this desert situation. It's hot, it's dusty, and they're probably in a tent or they were outside, you know, just. Um, <laughs> it's bad news. Yeah, yeah. The, if you're a modest person, it doesn't sound like you're. It sounds like your worst nightmare. It really. sounds like there was not a lot of modest people back then. No, I don't think you so. You didn't get the chance to be modest mm-hmm. back then. Yeah, yeah. So the, the priest examines you, and if you're found guilty, you're forced to separate. So there was a procedure they went through, you know, like if it's if it's white and red and puffy, then you do this. If it's not white and red and puffy and it's getting smaller, then you're you're getting better, you know. Yeah. Uh, or we got to wait another pre- seven days. Um, and so the priest would come back, you know, again and again. And if you, if it's progressing in the right direction, you're allowed back into camp. Um and both can be a state of living dead. So you can make a strong argument that somebody that's got leprosy, especially in ancient times, they were the living dead. They were the first walking dead, if you will. That that's a good series. We should make that. Maybe we maybe go we back should in make time a series called, called the Walking Dead. But make it about walking dead lepers. Ah. That that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we missed out on an opportunity. I'm, um, I'm sure that'll work out yes. in the future. We can still do it. It's fine. <laughs> it seems it seems so cu- culturally relevant today. So I think people would just love it. Yeah. So. Now, I wonder, this is an interesting point, though, the living dead situation, because that was Adam, right? He said, mm. the day you eat of the fruit, uh, you'll be dead. Yeah. So he was dead, but living. Mm-hmm. He was the living dead. He he was leprous at that point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. And in essence, we we are in a, some version of that, you know, uh, while we're here. And both are incurable uh, without divine intervention, especially in the ancient world. Uh, both are connected to poverty. One is a poverty, physical poverty, and one is a poverty of spirit. Both require atonement. So uh, you, you can read all through the details in, in uh, the Torah about, uh, you know, atonements had to be made. Right. And when Yeshua is, you know, which I think we'll see a little later when you see Yeshua mm-hmm. and the leper, he yeah. tells them, go, mm-hmm. go to the priest. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a procedure. Yeah. Which is interesting, too, for people that go, he uh, canceled the law. And okay, the law yeah. is all why thrown is he, away. Why is he sending people to the priest? Uh huh. No. It's just see why do you gotta bring this stuff up, man? It, get, it gets me all riled up because when if you if you're gonna say that, when does the time start? Is it when he was born, or when he started saying it, mm. or when he died? When when is the cutoff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's a head scratcher. <laughs> So, um, as a human, so basically you could, you could hear, smell, and see this terrible condition, you know, before, as they approach you, your first impulse is to grab your family and run the other way. Let's go kids. There's a leper. So, um, you'd be repulsed by it. You might even gag. How dare you? (laughs) I know. I know. 
it seems like it would get you in trouble in today's society <laughs> right. if you run away. They'd, they'd probably call you, uh, what was it, the hate speech or yeah. um, hate crime just from – yeah. I, or racism or it wouldn't be racism but it would be a form of prejudice yeah. for sure yeah so there would probably be some big movement about how we shouldn't be shouldn't run away prejudiced shouldn't be scared to the leprous yeah yeah so but definitely in the ancient world they um you, you kind of went the other way so there was a great scene from the chosen uh, we're going to plug that again where it shows um a, a leprous guy coming in to uh, um, a merchant store and the guy just he, he's a Jewish person and he just freaks out you know because he this leper coming into his store just made everything unclean and he's like I gotta throw everything in here away you know I don't you know everything he touched and so it was um, it was a big deal it was a big deal yeah and I know so, in the last one there I, don't, I think I cut you off you'd be repulsed and you might gag at the sight and sound of them yeah I mean, yeah. we need to elaborate. I don't know. No. <laughs> and I think a lot of times that out of um, politeness, they would cover themselves up mm -hmm. so you didn't have to necessarily look. But still, they, you can't cover up the smell. Well, that's like today, right? Um, out of uh, uh, for, you know, to be polite to people, you know, you, mm -hmm. you get sick, you cover it, you put the face mask on. Mm-hmm. So, how does our father view this? Um, you know, this is how he sees our sin. He's repulsed by it. He can't stand it. He cuts it off. He throws it out of the camp into the darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, it's kind of interesting. Our response to some of these things, um, and especially the ancient response to someone with leprosy, that should be our response for sin. We should do that with sin. It should repulse us. It should gag us. And we should want to run the other way, but unfortunately, or send it the other way. Yeah, but yeah. unfortunately, we don't. Yeah, and then even you know, uh, Paul even talks about that. How to, you know, you're supposed to not even eat with a brother that mm. that does these things, right? And he talks about fornication and adultery and and things like that. But the the point stands as explained here that. You know, you that's you don't associate with that. No. So, and I hear a lot of times when people will say, "Well, even Yeshua ate with the sinners, right?" And, uh, but yeah, he did. But if your brother is doing, you, you know, you have to engage with the sinner to to bring them to to repentance. But once he is a brother. That means he has to stop doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Well, you cast him out because he's mm -hmm. not acting brotherly. Yeah. And that is kind of a ridiculous argument to make because, okay, um, nobody could hang out with Yeshua then. I mean, right. he couldn't have any contact. He's unclean because Everyone's everybody's so filthy. Yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So today we've seen quarantine. We have seen mask covering the lip. And so um, just like, uh, you know, it's often said the lepers had to cover their lip. I believe that's in the Torah. It says they had to cover right. their lip and go, unclean, unclean. We should institute that. People yes. should be saying that too. Yeah, we should. Start that today. Let us know how that goes. At your nearest grocery store. Yeah. I, mm. I'll be pointing people. Unclean. Mm -hmm. mm. That'll go over well. <clears throat> yes, you'll be Will popular. You come bail me out of jail? Well, <laughs> have you seen the video? There, there was oh. a video in New York City where somebody was shopping at the grocery store without a mask. Yes, and everybody Gasp. starts just going crazy and yelling terrible things at them, and they're yeah. publicly shamed out the door. Yeah. So it kind of has happened. But True. Kinda kind of the a weird, opposite way. A weird way. <laughs> Other way around, though. And so they were supposed to, were supposed to stay six feet apart. You know, almost every store you go into. I was at the famous Bucky's gas station. Have you ever been to Bucky's? I don't think so. Mm. Well, they have beaver nuggets, and you should try a beaver that nugget. And they're unclean. completely clean. <laughs> <laughs> they're completely clean. They're just if you call sugar clean. 
Okay. So um, I guess you could make an argument. This it's really bad for you. Maybe it should be unclean, uh, but it's right. everything. My kids are so. funny. They go, "Mommy, mommy, this says kosher on it. We can get it." And we're like, "Okay, it might say kosher. Does not mean it's good for you. <laughs> yeah. Just because you can't eat it doesn't mean you should." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this whole bag of sugar says it's kosher. Right. Um, but uh, Bucky's today I uh, stopped there which is a it's a pretty awesome gas station you get your t-shirt there it's got a little beaver on it and um, the kids like it and, and so anyway um, it's a really busy place and it's one of these places where there's like literally 300 gas pumps out in the front we call those sheets that's sheets up in uh, the, up, the, oh. the upper north easterly there's part a of big the gas station called sheets sheets and it's like a thing yeah and they have food. And, yep. Yeah. Like okay. they invented that. <clears throat> no, they if, did. Well, I invented don't know. Invented food don't know. in to Pennsylvania? Us, to us, they invented the gas station where you order food. Oh. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Started in Pennsylvania. You heard it here first. Well. <laughs> so, um, so, but, you know, they have the little markers on the floor six feet yes. apart. Six feet apart. Everywhere it's in the bathrooms. It's everywhere. Uh Social distancing saves lives. So, I mean, I've just seen that everywhere. Well, this is nothing new. The Pharisees and their tradition taught that you had to be six feet apart from a to be clean. That's from what they the literally taught. Mm -hmm. From the leper or any unclean person? I think I specifically was looking up leper. Okay. But, okay. So, anyway, we have limited mobility, mobility, and we're supposed to stay in our own colony, if you will. Yeah. So stay in our own camp. And I so, like my own colony. Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah. <laughs> Social distancing works well for me. Yeah. So less people in my life uh, out in the general public, I'm fine with. So, um, I like all the memes where people are like, um, where you know, they just talk the same thing, say that the social distancing hasn't affected their life in any way, and they realize that they don't talk to anyone or go anywhere. Yeah. So, Matthew 8, would you read this one? Uh, when Yeshua came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. A man with a serious skin disease came and bowed down in front of him. The man said to Yeshua, Sir, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Yeshua reached out, touched him, and said, I'm willing, so be clean. Immediately, his skin disease went away, and he was clean. Yeshua said to him, Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, show yourself to the priest. Then offer the sacrifice Moses commanded as proof to people that you are clean. Yeah. There so it is. Just an interesting side note right there. You know, he's he he never said go against what was written before. He right. he that he just doesn't say that. So so um, you know, if you're trying to talk to someone about uh, Torah, I think this is a good place to argue, you know, for sure. You know, have them explain to you, you know, if that if it wasn't a big deal to follow Torah, why why did he do that? Right. Now, one of the things uh, that I usually bring up is that, um, and it might there might be some nuance to it because of the way it's worded, but I don't I don't think that uh it might be a little controversial maybe that'll get us some views oh but <laughs> no so i don't think that yeshua uh healed people now i know it says that he in other places as well that he heals them right it it says that but what does it mean by that Right? That's kind of where I'm going. Because most of the time, he says, your faith has healed you. It's the fact that this guy was even willing to come to Yeshua that shows that he had the faith that he would be healed. Ipso facto, he's healed. Right? So, now, that's just me. Maybe, you know, I'm not saying thus says Yahweh or anything, mm -hmm. but that's kind of how I see these things happen is that it's these people their faith is healing them and and Yeshua is the uh, the conduit of that healing 
Um, so, if you disagree, put it in the comments. And I mean, yeah, send it I, to Matt's email. Yeah, <laughs> I think I see see what you're saying, uh, bef but I do think you probably touched him. But I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that um, it's it's uh, the the power of of uh, this, the father running through him, but but also I think you'd have to study the mighty right hand, um, and uh, because you know I believe Yeshua is. His mighty right hand. Well, and he is called the, the great healer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And it says there's healing in his wings. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I do think those are powerful things, you know, kind of going the opposite from what you're saying there. But uh, but I do believe that he, um, he uh, makes it clear that this is, um, you know, the, he's doing the will of his father. And right. this power has been given to him through his father. Yeah, and, and I'm not I'm not saying as exactly as I'm explaining, but it's there's something to that I think. Maybe it might be a good uh, spinoff one day to yeah. do do a episode about. And then and then by the way, it doesn't really say leprosy here; it just says right. skin disease. So we don't really know what it is, but 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 uh, you know, but I do think it's clear that you know we it's kind of amazing we have. Uh, God in the flesh who wasn't afraid to reach out and touch a person when the Pharisees were terribly afraid of this and they wouldn't even be, they couldn't even be six feet near this guy right. because of their own rules and things that they said. And, you know, I think that's part of what Yeshua does is he comes along. He's like, you guys don't get it. <laughs> you know, this is not, you've made it all about, um, you, you, you've taken this wrong. Right. Um, but and then Mark 1 40 through 45 and for some reason I went the NIV here but uh, a man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees if you're willing you can make me clean you, you know and just stop there you got to think about this you know this is a dramatic scene and uh, you know I feel like some of these moments in time you know first off Yeshua healed so many people uh, it says that they couldn't record it all right and I, I feel like it was a non-stop thing for him um and, um, you know, this, this, but I feel like there were many moments in his life where there was kind of a scene made. And so I think, you know, they, this, it seems like the crowd kind of stops and, and, you know, you see this moment where the, the hush falls over the crowd and, and you see this guy begging on his knees and, and, um, well, first off, when they realized he's a leper, I'm sure it was like, <laughs> <laughs> there was a big oh. circle around him. Yeah. And they're like, whoa. Yeah. And it's just Yeshua and this guy in the middle of the circle. Right. And everybody's watching. Yeah. And just in amazement. And, you know, and you, you put yourself in this leper's. We don't know how old he is. He is as a man. So I'm assuming he's dealt with this for a long time. And he is desperate. I mean, he is so tired. He's lost, potentially lost his entire family, his wife, his children, everyone he loves you know he's been cut off from and so he is in desperate and so it takes you back to another thing that is how we should be with our sin we should be on our knees begging him to make us clean yeah and we we, we i think that that's part of what we are supposed to understand with leprosy is is that direct correlation between how ugly how nasty our sin is in his presence and how we have to have his healing right so, I think uh, interesting, too, is you, you don't see Yeshua seeking people out. They seek yeah, him out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to if the concept of ask, seek, knock, and you shall find. Mm -hmm. And so they did. And, and that's a great, great point, Jake. You know, um, that's a clear – I had never thought about it that way, but that is clear, you know, that – when we seek him, we're going to find him. He says that. Yeah, and if we're modeling Yeshua, do we seek out people to go heal them? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeshua didn't. Yeah, yeah. But he taught the, the he taught those around him that were willing to listen. Yeah, and he says, "He who has an ear, let him hear." Yeah, yeah, that's good. 
And then 41, Jesus was indignant. Jake, what did that really mean? I think when we looked at this, it actually means compassionate. Yeah. He had compassion on this person. Yeah. So he has compassion on him. He reaches out his hand and he touches him, says, I am willing. He said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And I'm sure everybody in the crowd is like, what? Um, and, uh, and it doesn't necessarily say there's a crowd around him, but I think – I don't know. You it, know always it does seem like there's a crowd around him. You know, very rarely was he completely alone, I think. And, and you know, except those moments where he said he went away. Right. Uh, Yeshua sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Yeshua could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in the lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere, which is kind of ironic. And, you know, he, the uh, lepers probably also lived in the outside lonely places. Mm -hmm. And here Yeshua is having to do the same thing. Yeah. Well, and uh, this is Mark 1, mm -hmm. so I don't know if he's really got the crowds following him yet. Right, yeah, that's pretty early on. And then uh, Luke 17, 11 through 19, would you read this one? Sure. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Yeshua traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Yeshua, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising Elohim in a loud voice. He threw himself at Yeshua's feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Da, da, da. <laughs> Yeshua asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to Elohim except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. See, this is what I'm talking about. His, yes, he w they came to him and he said, okay, go away and you're cleansed. Yeah, he clearly doesn't touch them here. Right. And and yet, it's their faith that that made them well. And mm -hmm. it was, it's, it's this idea that I'm mm -hmm. talking about, that they even came to him just because of their faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and you can preach a mountain of sermons. Right about belief and what you believe right. and so and i think that's what we're seeing in our society if you believe that you're going to get sick you're probably going to get it you're going to get this thing if you sit around and worry about it all the time and watch the news every time and you're like you know when fedex ups knocks on the door to bring your stuff because you never leave your house and you hide and, behind your yes. rules of toilet paper yes and your ammo <laughs> and uh you're afraid to interact with any other living human um. Yeah. I don't and know. I think scriptures. If you look at uh, uh, there was a study on uh, uh, if you've ever looked at um, Tom Martinsic, he does a study on uh, health and its relation to scripture, health in the Bible, hmm. and it's it's like a 10 part series or more mm -hmm. and you know two and a half hours a piece kind of situation but it's very he goes into detail on a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the tie-ins of what mm -hmm. makes people sick and through scripture yeah. and stuff and just that idea there of if you're like worried about getting sick and you believe you're gonna get sick it talks about that in scripture Mm -hmm. And versus, you know, they say that laughter is the best medicine and all this stuff. Well, that's in scripture, too. You know, that mm -hmm. idea. Um, and that's in uh, uh, that's from Elia.com. No, oh, yeah. Some, uh -huh. some, uh, some good studies there. But he, but, he, taught, he has a good health mm -hmm. study that goes into that kind of thing. But definitely our belief system and what we think, you know, it's that stinking thinking. You know, we that's kind of a colloquialism that is probably way overused but but it's it's true you know there's so many people that just it goes back to that poverty of spirit poverty of mind they just they always look at the world just doom and gloom and death and destruction and yeah i think 
th when you believe that and look at everything like that, and that's the world lens or the world view that you put on everything, more more stuff's probably going to happen to you, unfortunately, because well, you're like you're bringing worried, it on yourself. Right, and if you're worried about stuff, you're not really putting your faith and trust in you. Yeah, 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 and you may be putting your faith and trust in other things. Yeah. So, and then the rest of it. Yeshua was in oh. Bethany. Well, and, and oh, man. I don't think I copied the rest of this, but I, oh, he said 19. Yeah, I guess do 19. We did finish 19. I wish I would have done the rest of that. I wonder if he goes to the priest here and um, does that. Jake's going to look that up. We'll come back to that. But in Matthew 26, 6, um, a woman prepares Yeshua's body for the tomb. And Yeshua was in Bethany. The home of Simon, a man who had suffered from a skin disease, while Yeshua was sitting there, a woman went to him with a bottle of very expensive perfume and poured it on his head. The disciples were irritated when they saw this and they asked, why did she waste it? It could have been sold for a high price and the money could have been given to the poor. Since Yeshua knew that what was going on, he said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing for me. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. She poured this perfume on my body and placed it before it's placed in the tomb. So I can guarantee you this truth. Who, wherever the good news is spoken in the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Nope. Go back a couple. Where was, uh, oh, look one. Oh, what was the, no, no, go to the next one. Luke 17. Luke gotcha. 17, 11 through 19. So like Luke 17, 20. Uh, then it just goes into, uh, he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of Elohim should come. He answered them and said, the kingdom of Elohim comes not with observation. Okay. So it starts going into something else. But when but they did go away, right? Go show yourself. Verse 14 there. Oh, he does. Yourself. He does say go show yourself to the priest. Yeah, right. 14. So he still tells them to follow right. Torah, basically. They knew what that meant. Yeah. It wasn't like he had to go explain the whole thing. Yeah. They knew it. So, so anyway, Yeshua gets anointed. Um, and, you know, Jake, I really don't remember where I was going with that piece of it, but... Well, I did jump in the middle of what you were saying there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I'm sure it was very, yeah. very important. I don't know. I don't know where I was going. Um, <laughs> oh, so Simon suffered a skin disease while Yeshua was sitting there. Yeah, that's probably probably where he came from. So. Mm. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. And I think there's some controversy over what the that this might not be a skin disease. Mm -hmm. Some people say it is. Some people say it's leprosy. Yeah. Some people say that part of it isn't even in there. Right. So. <clears throat> well, and I think you know that's kind of all I had. Um, clearly, I ran out of gas there at the end. <laughs> just kind of <laughs> went off the cliff. Um, over the shark, uh, like Fonzie. Um. Speaking of, do you know that reference? Jump the shark, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, very good, very good. So, uh, but you know, the the bottom line is just like leprosy um, and sin, it often starts off small and spreads, and we should be equally repulsed by the sin in our lives uh, as the people were repulsed by the leprosy they saw coming down the road. Right, and you can't be repulsed by sin if you don't know what it is. That's right. That's right. And how do you know what it is? Uh. Scripture. Scripture. All reading, scripture reading, is good for instruction in yeah, righteousness. Right? Yeah, reading the scriptures. That's right. The whole book, cover to cover. It has, you know, not just not just the uh, the end of the book, the beginning of the book too. Right. So, well, Jake, do you have anything else to add or anything else to say about the no, leprosy? No, I think we sin? hit every detail about leprosy and its relation to sin and how it's, you know, a a type and shadow of sin when it's being expressed and it's it shows up very clearly when you understand what sin is what leprosy is how you're to deal with leprosy and how yahweh deals with sin i yeah. think it's i think the tie-in is pretty obvious yeah well um before we leave this i do want to uh show you uh that if you just type in 
Sabbath Lounge. You'll find that we're on, you know, if you just Google Sabbath Lounge, uh, it, we come up, we do very well in our uh, search rankings. Yeah. Uh, so um, we pop up, the, you know, on Yahushua, Facebook, Sabbath Lounge, YouTube, uh, listen to podcasts. I don't even know what that is. Uh, and then it goes into things that we're not even going to talk about here. We're but, not associated. <laughs> yes. So, um, but we do have a website that if you go to it's dot com, or if you just type in Sabbath Lounge, it it does go to us. And so there you will find a, a little bit about. Um, I should change this from my to our and our. Uh, Jake, don't let me forget that. So I don't mean to to exclude you, but I feel so um, excluded. Yes. <laughs> and so there's a Facebook link, and uh, so there is a Facebook page, and it's giant apparently. So, and well, you um, want people to be able to see it. Is that's the, right. Is the key. So, so you can go to uh, and the most Facebook. Of our viewers, very dim sight. Yes. <laughs> yes. Apparently, <laughs> apparently. Uh, I, uh, I'm speaking of me. Yes. <laughs> um, for sure. So. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's one of the places you can find us. And hey, I this have, is blown up. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, so here we have a blog and podcast. We have a voicemail, which we've had some voicemail. We appreciate that. And a YouTube channel. This will be published in YouTube. If you listen to this on a podcast, you might want to check out the YouTube so you can see it. So. But uh, through time, I've posted different things. This is the latest about Shavuot uh, and uh, what it means and first, uh, fresh fruits. Uh, fr fresh fruits? <laughs> fresh fruits? Fresh fruits. Fresh fruits. I good, though. <laughs> yes, fresh fruit is delicious. <laughs> so, um, But, you know, we, we appreciate if you check these things out. And, uh, and, and most importantly, uh, you know, we're trying to grow this thing. And, uh, you know, Jake and I, uh, we're, we don't make a dime from this. We don't ask anybody for money. Uh, we don't. We don't need to do that. Um, we're, you know, we're blessed to be in a position where that's not required. Um, and um, you know, because and thoughts on scripture shouldn't be paid for. I mean, right. you shouldn't have to pay to learn scripture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do believe this should be free, and anything you see here, you can use. It's not like. Um, uh, what well, you know, I can't claim. Oh, copyrights aren't going to come right. after you. That's right. There's no Although, copyright police. Matt and his big lawyers. Yes. <laughs> yes, my big. They're deep pockets. Well, it's my my Lincoln lawyer. Ah. Matthew McConaughey reference. Okay. So okay. <laughs> you never saw that movie, did you? No. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, not. That's a pretty good one. So anyway, we appreciate you stopping by and listening. And as always, we appreciate a like, comment, subscribe, and especially a share. And that's where I was trying to go with this. You know, please share this with people. Uh, we are asking a young man that comes in our fellowship. And he's like, you just need to get three people. Just tell three people. And then if they tell three people, and then they those three people tell three people. Very simple. And yes, that's all we got to do. Yep. So It'll spread like a virus of sorts. <laughs> yes, a virus. How interesting. So... And anyway, we appreciate you listening, and uh, this is Matt signing off. And Jake out.